Hello, friends. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. And this show, this episode, it feels different. It feels different because, well, it all started, well, as a leap of faith. Because usually before I agree to do a review, I kind of know what I'm getting myself into, right? I know something about the company, or I've heard, you know, I usually know. This time I didn't, I didn't know anything, really. Now, the speaker, by the way, is the LSA Signature 50. And when I looked at pictures of it online, I had something of, let's say, a deja vu feeling. Like, wait a minute, this looks so much like, or it reminds me, I should put it that way, of the Sonus Faber Electa Amateur, the original ones that I was selling in, I think, the early 90s when I was a hi-fi salesman. It had that look. Now, that speaker, <laughs> the Sonus Faber, was really, really expensive. Two-way, but bigger than this, but expensive, similar look. And this one is a lot less expensive. I'm going to tell you the price right up front. It's $499 a pair. Uh, it's on sale right now for $499. The regular price is $599. I'll, I'll get to more of that soon enough. But anyway, it was the look of the speakers, those big chunky side panels and the faux leather uh, cladding to the front baffle and the top. It just had a Sonus Faber kind of vibe to it. And maybe that, more than anything, I, I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, yeah, send them over. Now, that doesn't mean I'm definitely going to do the review, but I was intrigued enough to say yes. So I get the box, I get it in, and the box doesn't say uh, LSA Audio Signature 50. It has a completely different name on it. These speakers were from an early production run of 50 pieces, so it didn't have the correct box, and the, the name on the back of the speaker was just press tape, LSA Signature 50. So that was a little weird. But anyway, they, they, they assured me that this is just the first production run, and the, right, and the ones that come after this will have LSA boxes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, well whatever. But I, I lift this speaker up from the box. It was two in one box. And this is a seriously hefty speaker for a $499 pair of speaker. It weighs 23 pounds each one. Very solid construction. Okay, so I started listening and I'm thinking, wait, wait, wait. This speaker makes a serious amount of bass for a speaker with a six and a half inch treated paper cone woofer. It's a very interesting looking woofer and it actually recalls the look of early Sonus Faber. So, and the tweeter is a Silk Dome 1.1 inch tweeter. I'm going to put up the complete specs right now. And well, the first one that jumps out because it's not the usual course, it's not a four ohm speaker, it's an eight ohm speaker. So that makes it easier to drive than most speakers that nowadays are four ohms. And I'm always telling you, you need an amp that can happily drive four ohms. Not this time. Yes, thank you. The crossover, though, and by the way, they show pictures of their crossover. I'll put them up uh, because they're proud of it. Most companies hide their crossovers. Uh, LSA shows it to you right on their website. And it's got film capacitors and a nice inductor. It looks phenomenal for a speaker in this price class. And the crossover itself, the frequency of the crossover, is unusually high. It's 3.8K. While most two-way speakers of this type, it's more like around 2,000 meaning that the woofer is going up higher into the treble region than most, and the tweeter has an easier time because it's only, going, it's only handling frequencies above 3.8K. So again, interesting. Sensitivity is on the low side, as you'll see there, 86 dB. And if anything, I think it might even be lower. This speaker needs some juice to get it going. Uh, and oh, but here's the kicker, literally and figuratively. The low bass response extends down to 38 hertz. That's what it says on the specs. But I'll tell you this. I played test tones through the speaker, through the Signature 50, and damn, <laughs> it did really go down that low. So yeah, for a speaker of this size, it makes a lot of bass, and I would strongly recommend you do not put this speaker close to a wall behind it. By the way, it is a rear ported design. And yeah, I think 18 inches, which is what I wound up using, is a good starting place and probably where you'll land. But of course, every room is different. When I say 18 inches, I mean to the back of the speaker. Before we go any further, I will announce, yes, there will be an audiophiliac 
viewer system of the day later on in today's show. The warranty is for five years, and no surprise, this speaker is made in China. The LSA Signature 50 is sold direct by Underwood Hi-Fi. Uh, they are available seven days a week to answer your questions, even by phone. That's pretty amazing. And I will link to the website directly below this video. The other components that I used with the Signature 50 were <laughs> as follows. I used the MyTech Liberty DAC 2, which is also a preamp. I used that with a MyTech Brooklyn Power Amp and my ever faithful, so far at least, Oppo Blu-ray player. And when I did do a comparison in this review with the Klipsch RP600 Mark II that I just reviewed days ago, so it was a head-on comparison between those two speakers. Okay, so my first music selection was this one, Neil Young's and Crazy Horse, uh, Sleeps with Angels. Now this record is, I guess, dedicated to or was in memory of Kurt Cobain, who had passed, obviously, before this record was made. And it's one of Neil's pretty records. There's pretty songs, and there's hard rockin' songs, and just good. It's just really good stuff. It's like, I think, one of his strongest records of this phase of his career, which I guess is the, the early 90s. But anyway, really wonderful record, and I played it, and I played it loud. Now, I did realize, as I'm playing this stuff, is that this speaker, the Signature 50, is not one that's at its best when played at late night, very quiet levels. That's, that's not its strength. Turn it up a bit, feels good. Turn it up a bit more, <laughs> feels better. Played really loud, sounds really good. This guy can take a beating. It can really handle power. So anyway, I'm playing that one, Sleeps With Angels, and that led to this arc which was like a, I don't know if this was a limited release, it's a 35 minute album with one track. It's just distortion. It's a collage of different performances of feedback and distortion and just craziness. Not really too many vocals, just a sound collage, a sound barrage. <laughs> you know, this thing really hits you hard. Just the, the texture of it, the sparks that are flying through the air. It's a real kick. So anyway, I enjoyed what the Signature 50 did with those sounds. Next up was this one, Pink Floyd's Piper at the Gates of Dawn. It's, it's their first record, I'm pretty sure. It was recorded in 1967 at Abbey Road. What an auspicious debut. Now, I'm one of these guys who I prefer Pink Floyd before Dark Side of the Moon. I'm less involved <laughs> in the later records. But they're early stuff, really psychedelic, just sound for sound's sake, just great reverb, just dense, really dense mixes. And it wasn't the Roger Waters show at that point, it was the Sid Barrett show in the early days. And I just felt he was a more creative guy. But anyway, this record sounded great, and the soundstage was massive, floated free of the speakers, not much depth going on, but it sounded big and trippy, which is the whole idea, right? So these speakers, these speakers, can disappear. They absolutely can. They kind of, you wouldn't think so based on their hulk, their, their muscular demeanor, but in fact, yes, they can throw a very satisfying image. One catch was the bass, at least here on this Pink Floyd record, was kind of thick and muddy at times. The speaker does have a thick, because it's producing so much bass, it can feel, literally, like too much at times, but depends on the recording. And of course, it depends on the room. Now, I didn't have a huge amount of time to fine-tune the sound of these speakers, so if you live with them, you can and really, you know, put in the time and place them 100%, you could probably uh, ameliorate some of that boominess. For a comparison speaker, it was obvious what I had to use. The Klipsch RP600 Mark II that I just reviewed a few days ago. It was sitting right here, so I figured, yeah, why not? Well, these are two very, very different sounding speakers, totally like miles apart, because obviously the Signature 50 is all about potency and power and richness and balls, and the RP600M Mark II is less so. It makes some bass, but not in the league of the Signature 50, not even close. But the Signature 50 can't keep up with the RP600M Mark II, 
dynamically. It just has more life, more detail, more sparkle, more jump factor. Not even close. So they're kind of going very much in opposite directions. And, and because of that sensitivity, I felt like I had to play the sensitivity lacking in the Signature 50. I had to play it louder. And once I played it louder than I was playing the RP600M Mark II, well, yeah, again, these are very, very different beasts. Now, if you're into bass, you might want to add a sub if you're using <laughs> the Klipsch. Probably not, unless you're really, really, really into like room shaking bass. The, the Signature 50 will probably satisfy without any assistance on the bottom end. But again, because the RP600 is so sensitive, 94.5 dB, you can use it with very, very low power amplifiers and still make plenty of sound. And this speaker, the Signature 50, I would say at least 50 watts, 100 watts. I was using 250 and loving it, you know. And, and when I played it loud and really rocking out with it, I, don't, I definitely wasn't using all 250 watts, not even remotely close. But having the extra power on tap is probably a good idea if you're going to get Signature 50s. You know, I keep harping on the bass. I keep telling you how much bass the speaker makes. But I should also add, I should have said this earlier, that extends up to the lower mid-range. It is very full and rich sounding. So yeah, if you're into the more neutral sound or even analytical sound or tonal balances, no, the Signature 50 is not going to be the one to make you happy. No, I don't think so. But if you want, if you crave that kind of body to your music, this speaker can really deliver the goods. Now the next recording I played was this one, Amber Rubarth. Now this was a Chesky session from 2012. It's amazing to think it's 10 years ago. And Amber is a folk singer basically, and she came fully prepared, man. She was such a natural. A lot of singers get very uptight at sessions, you know, they make mistakes and no, Amber just like rolled through the entire session, never made any mistakes, was totally at ease. And that ease, you can hear it in her voice. Uh, there were, she's accompanying herself on guitar and there are other instruments, but it's, it's really her show. And she was so good. And the songs are so good. I strongly recommend you look for this one. It's a live to two track. It's a Chesky session. I was present. Uh, no compression, no equalization, etc., etc. What went down at the session is what you hear in this recording. It's a binaural recording, by the way. It sounds good over speakers, but it sounds, I'd say, even better over headphones. Anyway, great recording. And I would say that the Signature 50 was warming up her vocal sound a bit much. Yeah, it was a bit fuller than it should have been. But not in an unpleasant way. I'm just saying it's, it's veering in that direction of sounding a bit too warm in the mids. For me, for my taste. But of course, it's not about me, it's about you. It's what you are looking for in your sound. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna do, so Steve, what do you really think? What do you really think of the LSA Signature 50 speaker? Well, I think that's obvious at this point. It is a lot of speaker for the money in terms of what it looks like, the way it's built, what it sounds like. It, it's, there's nothing else really at its price, $499 a pair, that does what this one does, at least that I'm aware of. I haven't heard every speaker on the planet. But of the ones I've heard, this one can really kick some ass, man. It's got some juice to it. So even in, you know, mid to even large size rooms within reason, this speaker can really fill a room. And as I alluded to earlier, Give it some space. Don't jam this one near a wall. That's not going to end well. You got to let this puppy breathe. <laughs> and when you let it breathe, it will sound better and better. So, yeah, I think it's terrific. So, if I whetted your appetite for more, check out the people, talk to some people at Underwood Hi-Fi and you will get more information. And that's it. So now it is time for <laughs> the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. This one comes from Jorg. He started his audiophile journey more than 20 years ago. But the speakers we see in the picture here are Odeon 26.2 and they come from a manufacturer about 20 miles away from his hometown. 
Obviously, they're horn speakers, high sensitivity, 94 dB, and they're 8 ohms. Now, for amplification, he's experimenting with biamping and using a Croft integrated with no negative feedback for the bass and a DIY 3 watt single ended EL84 amp for mids and highs. The preamplifier is an Audreal Xanax XA3200 Mark II based on a Matisse circuit he bought from a hi fi journalist. Okay. The DAC, though, is the ever popular Denifreps Aries II. Streamer is an i fi Zen. Somewhere in there, there's a Lin Basic turntable with an Akito tone arm. Thanks, York. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am indeed the audiophiliac. Thank you so much for being here. And if you really enjoy the show, I'd like you to consider joining my Patreon. Uh, that is the best way to keep this thing going. I make my living doing this. I don't, I'm not a dentist or a doctor or a law professor. This is my job, making videos. So I need your support. Uh, check out the Patreon. You'll see what I offer at various price ranges, and that's it. But wait, there's more. My podcast, the Audiophiliac Podcast, it keeps getting better and better. I hope so. <laughs> I really do. And uh, you can hear it on my own website, which is just for the podcast. It does nothing else. It just houses and it's the platform for all of my podcasts. How many are there? About 19 or 20 of them so far. And you can listen to the podcast there, or you can listen to them on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or iHeartRadio, all the usual places people hear podcasts. So check it out. Now I can say, yeah, if you dig it, if you really dig it, hit that like button. Hit it every time you watch one of my videos, at least the ones you like. Of course, if you don't like them, don't hit the button. But please, if you have yet to subscribe, please do so and join us. 215,000 subscribers. Man, it just blows my mind. And with that, I can say, my mind blown, I'm done. <laughs> this is it. This is all I got for you today. Thank you again for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again as soon as possible. Bye-bye. <laughs>